days later, um, CPS came to my door asking to remove my child. But only after um, I had another CPS worker call me once I had got out of uh, jail. And when I got out of jail, she called me and told me that they would give me 25 years to life if I did not tell them where my son was located. Um, it's my situation. Um, I've been watching you for a while now, and my son was removed because me and my husband had got into a domestic violence altercation. So I was arrested, and I was gone to jail for five days, let out in Linwood, California, and did not get charged with anything. And um, when I got home, three days later, um, CPS came to my door asking to remove my child. But only after um, I had another CPS worker call me once I had got out of uh, jail. And when I got out of jail, she called me and told me that they would give me 25 years to life if I did not tell them where my son was located. So they called my um, husband's dad and they asked if my husband's dad would take the kid for seven days. So it would be a seven day safety plan. So me not realizing, as soon as they came, I said, okay, she comes to my house, she knocks on my door, and they told me that they have a search warrant, but I did not ask to see it. Mm -hmm. So she said, we would have to get a search warrant, and she said, we already have one. And I said, okay, well, come to find out, um, when I had said that, I was just like, oh, okay. I said, well, where's the search warrant at? She says, oh, well, we have it. I was like, well, okay. Whatever. So I let her in. Once I let her in, um, she starts talking to me. She told my husband that she would talk to him later. And once um, she was done with me, she had wrote everything down that I was crazy, that I was unfit to take care of my son, but there was nothing in my house, no drugs, no uh, anything. And so she asked if we would take a drug test. I said yes, voluntarily. We've been voluntarily with everything that we've done in this um, in this whole thing. So we take the drug test, and me and my husband positively comes up with high levels of methamphetamine at like 57,000 mg and 45,000 mg. So I'm like, wow, really? I said, no, we demand a retest. So we get the retest immediately, like not even two days later. We get that. And we get the retest, and my test is completely negative, and my husband's test was negative. Everything was negative, but with low traces of marijuana. So now they have went on trying to adopt out my child to the actual grandparents, but my mom and my dad kind of like got discarded because of some things um, that the other grandparents said where, where my child is. So. Um, what they said was is that my mom tried to kidnap my son. So they were trying to get my mom for indictment charges, I guess, or kidnapping. My mom did not know what was going on. So at this point, I didn't feel that that was really relevant. Um, you know, so everything went off on me. So now I get to only see my son one day on a Friday. That's it. And I'm supposed to have nine hours a week. And I talked to my actual... Um, I talked to my lawyer, and my lawyer says that, oh, no, you got tested for methamphetamine. For I said that was the first test, and it was compromised. We took the second test. The test came out negative, completely minded. My husband came out with low traces of marijuana. I said, I have been clean now for 10 and a half months of marijuana. So there was nothing in my system whatsoever. Then we had got from... Uh, the lady that just came on our case, she has not did anything. She says, so we're not going to do reunification this April, which is April 22nd, which is our court date. The last court date is supposed to happen. Um, we're not going to do reunification because we're not doing what we're supposed to do. When we went tested, 
we have every paperwork stating that we have tested and we were turned away. We also did all of our classes. Every class that we did, she had to say that it was DCFS approved. So she did not help us with that either. The place that she wanted us to test that was where our first test got compromised at. So they cleaned out a lot of people. That place is no longer, it's got all new staff. So the place that where she wanted us to test that, we are still testing there, but we're also taking all of our classes there that takes Medi-Cal. Because she told us there was no DCFS places. So then we got the worker falsifying um, paperwork, which we also have it on text message. And um, the only thing that she decided to do was just threaten me um, on text message that uh, since we're not doing what we're, uh, since we're not testing, all she wants to do is tell the judge that we are not doing reunification because they're not going to test. I said, we don't have a problem in testing. I was like, because we're not drug addicts. We have no problem with that. We have every paperwork. Come to find out when we went to go check for the testing, she's never put in any paperwork whatsoever as a referral for us to test. So how does that work? Well, first of all, let me ask you something. Do you have an attorney? A court-appointed attorney. I mean, I've been trying to get a hold of you, and I've talked to Georgetta a couple of times. And... um. You know, it, it was really hard for me trying to get a hold, and I was so happy that I actually caught your show. But um, we have a court appointed attorney, and they just changed my son's attorney, and they just changed my attorney. My husband's attorney is the one that he said he still has his attorney, but a lot of attorneys walked out apparently. So we have no attorney pretty much, and we were trying to hire pretty much you. But, okay, well, you know, Fatima, it was like, Fatima, let me ask you something. Yes. Uh, are you available Monday or Tuesday in late afternoon? Yes. Are you located in Los Angeles? I'm in Lancaster, California. Okay. So this is what I want you to do. After today's show, I want you to contact uh, Georgette, and I want you to make an appointment to either come see me at the office or Zoom or telephone call. But before, okay. But before you do that, I want you to email me all of your court minute orders so that I can review them. Okay. okay. Uh, so one, one more thing I have to ask you, mm -hmm. um, is it okay for court documents to be scratched out once they're amended? Um, it depends. Uh, give me a, a more specific situation. Meaning, okay, so say two okay, minutes. Like our minute orders. One minute order says one thing, and the other minute order says another thing, but it's scratched out completely like it's just marked in. Yeah, I doubt that. That's why you want to get the copies of the minute orders from the court clerk. They'll have the original okay. final copies that we'll, we will go off of and work off of. Okay. okay. I thought so. So get those, okay. get those and then email them to me and Georgette, and then make the appointment to talk to me, and I'm going to give you a consultation on what should happen, okay? Okay, thank you so much. Hey, Fatima, thank you for calling, and okay. thank you for listening. Um, call, you know, call us back in three or four weeks and update us, um, the audience, on what, you know, what's going on in your case, okay? Okay, thank you so much. Mr. One minute. Thank you very much. Uh -huh, bye -bye. All right. Hey, Georgette, do you recognize Fatima? Yes, I do. Okay, so you heard what I said about her uh, getting in contact with me, um, sending me the minute orders and letting me review everything so that I can have some yes. kind of consult with her. Okay, very good. Okay. Make sure that happens. Okay, the engineer says we have to take another break. So this is the secret, how to fight CPS and when. We'll be right back after these messages.